Okay, um, so welcome back. This is uh, going to be parts B and C. So we found out that the answer to part A is that after the two seconds is four sacks, um, the velocity is going to be 10 meters per second, and it's going to all it's going to travel 10 meters. Um, and we decided that all three of these move together while the force is applied. Now the tricky part about B and C is that after the force is not up is is uh, removed. What you have is this thing is still still wants to cruise along. This thing, this one though, has some friction. That's going to try to slow it down. So you're going to have a friction force acting to decel, acting to sorry, negatively accelerate this. Um, sorry, Dr. Osborne hates the word decelerate, so I try not to use it because um, I don't want to see that man get violent. You know what I'm saying? But um, so so there's an acceleration this way from this this one. Um, so this one is going to tend to slow, going to slow down. It's going to force this one to slow down too, right? So it, it's like if you, if say, um, well, okay, tell you what, say, say, um, say like there are two cars on a highway and both of their brakes are shot and they're going the same speed um, and they discover they can't brake. So you come in and they're blue cars. You come in and you're a white car. You're the hero. And you come in and get in front, in between the two cars and you slam on your brakes. Or you hit, hit your brakes. There's just no space for you to wedge in. So you're touching both cars. You hit your brakes. The guy behind you is forced to slow down because now he's ramming into your bumper um, while you've got your brakes on. So you're slowing him down. But meanwhile, this guy in front of you, nothing's slowing him down. So he's just going to zip on ahead while the rest of you, you know, you two guys slow down. So um, I guess this analogy. I mean, if you were really a good person, you would get in front of this guy and hit your brakes. So this analogy kind of relies on on you being a jerk. But um, but I hope, I hope at least it explains you know um, what's going on here. So M is going the the center block is going to slow down. It's going to break basically, and it's going to slow down this block too. This one's going to keep cruising on forward. So let's look at now what happens. Um, this is the answer to part A there. So let's look at what happens in part B. Um, so we've got ooh, let's see okay. So you've got um, this thing like that, and there is your uh, one block with no friction, one block with friction. So we found before, um, you know, there's a normal force that's equal for all the blocks because they all have the same weight. And there's gonna be some kind of interaction forces here, right, where this one is pushing on this one, um, and this one's gonna have a friction force. And we found earlier that the friction force is going to equal um, mu times normal force, which is going to, oh, mu k times normal force, which is mu k times m g, where that m is the mass of each of these blocks. So one block has a mass of m. So um, now, you know, again, we could, we could analyze these separately and do interactions, or we could just analyze them as one body with mass 2m, right? And we could say, um, you know, it's got a normal force of 2 times n, where n is the normal force each one of these. Um, it's got a mass of, or a weight of 2mg, and then there is your friction force of mu k times mg. And so then, what we do simply is we do it almost feels silly to be doing a free body diagram here uh, for this, but uh, we're going to do it anyway. X and Y. So, uh, and then X and Y there, just to be super precise. Okay, so there's a 2N, there's our 2MG, and there is our mu k m g. So, let's do a sum of forces in the X direction. And that is going to and that is going to equal to equal m a. Now m mass in this case is going to be two m because both of these are slowing down, right? Okay, and so times a. Fantastic. So uh, let's see. That just means negative mu k m g equals two m a. Well, gee, this is almost looking too easy. So let's um, take and cancel our m's. And then we get uh, solve for acceleration. A equals negative mu k g divided by 
two. Well, now ain't that easy. So, um, you know, I, I guess we could also solve for we can also solve the rest of the symbolic. So why not? So um, for part now we've got um, let's see these two things cruising along, and they start at um, for part B the initial velocity for these two is going to be equal to uh, 10 meters per second. And then, of course, final velocity is zero. And acceleration is negative mu k g over 2. So, um, and I'm just going to go ahead. What the hell? I'm going to um, uh, do this, uh, you know, just put the numbers in. So it's going to equal 0.5 times 10 over 2, which is going to equal negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so um, let's do, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and find the time it takes for these things to stop, and you'll see, because that's going to be necessary for part C. So um, delta V over delta T equals A, this is constant acceleration. So delta V is, it starts at 10 and goes down to zero. So delta V is negative 10 meters per second. Delta T, don't know. And negative 2.5, ah, 2 there you go. Negative 2.5 meters per second squared. So negative 10 divided by negative 2.5. So delta T, after a moment's reflection, you'll see that delta T equals four seconds. Okay, so how far do we go in those four seconds? Um, you can do you can do this a number of ways. I'm just going to say um, delta x equals v naught times delta t plus one half a delta t squared. Okay, so um, delta x equals uh, ten times four. That's ten meters per second times four seconds plus one half, and then our acceleration was negative 2.5 meters per second squared times delta t squared. So this is going to equal um, 40, and this is going to be negative 2.5 times 4 times 4, so this is 16 here, and then uh, times 2.5, what's 16 times 2.5? Well, 16 times 2 is 32, and then another half is another 8, so it's going to be 40. And this means something it's negative 40 and then divided by 2. So that's going to be 40 minus 20 uh, meters. And so delta x equals 20 meters. So what we get is that these things move an additional 20 meters before they stop. That's after the 10 meters they moved. So depending on how you interpret the question, the answer is either 20 meters or 30 meters, whatever. Now, part C, so that's for part B. And I'll just go ahead and write that in purple. Okay, part C, um, how about let's do part C in peach. That's not peach. Ah, oh, whatever it is. Anyway, so let's do part C in this color. Um, part C is what about that that third block? Okay, what's that doing? Well, now let's look back at the problem statement. Uh, the third block. How far is the rightmost block traveled? Well, no friction, right? So it got accelerated up to 10 meters per second with the rest of these guys at the beginning, right? And then it just kept cruising. So uh, constant velocity here is all all we need to do. So um, delta x for you know that block is going to equal uh, velocity times. Don't look at me. My cat is looking at me like, why are you, why are you making those videos for students when you should be petting me or something? I don't know. Anyway, um, so the velocity then of this block it just keeps on cruising at its 10 meters per second um, because ain't nothing gonna stop it, right? It's it's. Uh, you know, it's it's got no friction, so it's going to keep going until it hits a wall or something. Okay, times four seconds. So that's going to equal 40 meters. So block C is going to go 40 meters. Now, again, that depends on um, how you interpret the question. You know, block C went, or the third block, I wouldn't call it block C, but you know, the rightmost block went 10 meters along with these two before these two started breaking. So it's going to go 40 meters from that point. So maybe 40, maybe 50, depending on how you interpret it. But anyway, that's how you do parts B and C.